What is simple harmonic motion? Well, let's find out. Say we had a light elastic string with a natural length of L, and we were to extend it a distance E, we find that we'd get tension forces within our string. Well, you might be wondering what these tension forces are. Well, we're going to look at something called Hooke's Law, which gives a basis to what this is. Right, so let's redo this extension, but let's start to think about what these tension forces might be. As it's a light elastic string, we know that if the extension is negative, we won't have any tension force at all. So that's why we get this red line here. But as we start to extend our string, we see we get this non-linear curve. So tension forces increase quicker as the extension increases. Then as the extension returns to zero, we see that we get this non-linear curve, saying that the tension decreases quicker as extension reduces. So that plot is actually just Hooke's law. If we were to write this mathematically, we find that we get the tension is equal to lambda times the extension over the natural length when the extension is positive and zero elsewhere. This lambda value is just our elastic modulus of the string, which varies depending on the material. So how is this relevant to simple harmonic motion? Well, if we think about the same sort of setup, we'll have a string with a natural length of L, but now we'll attach a mass to the bottom of it. If we were to extend this a distance E, just like we did before, we'd have tension forces again, but we'd also have our gravity force, which is just mass times gravity. We may also have other forces, for example, air resistance, but we'll have a look at that later on. So now what we're going to do is explore how this ball moves with respect to time. Let's start with Newton's second law, F equals ma. Currently in our model, we've only got two forces. We've got the gravitational forces and the tension forces. So let's substitute those in for F. Now, let's establish some sort of displacement. Let's say that x is the distance between our origin and the ball itself. This just means that our acceleration is x double dot, or the second differential of x with respect to time. So where do we go from here? Well, we actually know what this tension force is, because it's just Hooke's law. We derived that a second ago, so let's substitute that in. Then we also notice that our extension is actually just our displacement, take away the natural length, which just reduces one of the variables in this equation. Now what we're going to do is seek the equilibrium position. This is where the acceleration is just zero. So we'll see this right hand side will just vanish. Then what we'll do is we'll solve for x. After some simple rearranging, we see we get this expression for x. This is actually our equilibrium point, which we'll call x eq, which is equal to our natural length plus our natural length times mass times gravity over lambda. Now let's bring back our original equation. And we're going to use this trick where we let y equal x minus our equilibrium point. Now before substituting this value in, we're going to rearrange. So we'll say x is equal to y plus x eq. And as we have an x double dot in our system, we need to differentiate. We see that x dot is just equal to y dot, and x double dot is equal to y double dot, as x eq is just a constant, so it vanishes when we differentiate. So now we can substitute this into this main equation. We see that we get this x eq term as well, which we also know, so we can substitute that in as well. So this is actually quite a complicated looking expression, but we've actually set it up so that it will reduce really well. So we see that inside of our brackets, we've actually got a plus and a minus L, so they can cancel each other out. Then what we're going to do is expand our brackets, to which we see in this mg term that the constants will just cancel each other out. And nicely, we see that the mg terms cancel each other out as well, leaving us with a much simpler ODE. So we'll rearrange to get the y terms all on one side. And then if we divide through by m, we see that we are left with this expression. Finally, let's make a substitution. Let's say that omega squared is lambda over m times l. After substituting this back in, we actually are left with the equation for simple harmonic motion. So this is a second order ODE. And if you've watched my differential equation series, you may know how to solve this already. We do this by something called the auxiliary equation method. I'll link my video that I've done on this in the description for you below. The general solution to an ODE like this is y equals a sine omega t plus b cos omega t. Now that we've got the general solution to simple harmonic motion, what we can do is return to our x displacement variable by substituting y for the original value. After rearranging just to have x on one side, 
we can substitute our XEQ value back in, which we found earlier. After performing the substitution, we see that we've got an expression for x in terms of time. Therefore, we know how the displacement will change as time varies. So what does this look like? Well, if we look at a graph like this, where we've got time across the x-axis and displacement across the y, we see that we have a nice oscillation. What this actually means is that this mass at the bottom of our string oscillates up and down for infinite time, as there's nothing to reduce these oscillations. This links quite well to the next section of this video, where we're going to look at how this mass oscillates if, for example, we have a dampening term or a forcing term. So let's do exactly that. Let's set up a system where we've got air resistance, where it's 2 mkV, and we've also got a forcing term, f of t. So now this forcing term moves with respect to time. We still have this light elastic string with the tension force as well, but now this can be moved up and down. Similarly, our particle can still oscillate up and down itself, as we see here, and our displacement z will change in terms of time. So we're going to seek an expression for z in terms of time. We find this in a very similar way. So we're going to start with f equals ma. With all the forces in our system, the turquoise one will add distance to our z, and all the red ones will take distance away, so we're left with this expression. Just as we did before, we're going to use Hooke's law again to find an expression for tension, and then we seek for an equilibrium position. We're going to assume that f of t equals zero at this point, and we also know that the acceleration will equal to zero, so we're left with this expression, where we can quite easily solve for z, to which we see that our equilibrium position actually has the same expression of that of the simple harmonic motion one. So once again we'll label this, let's call it zeq, and we'll move it out of the way. So bringing back our general equation, we can start to try and solve for z. Once again we'll use a smart substitution where z equals x plus zeq, which we can substitute into our general equation like we did before. Now we can start to reduce this. Well, we'll expand the brackets and reduce some of our terms down. We see that we're left with this expression where we'll just rearrange to get all of our x terms on one side of the equation. Just as we did before, we'll divide through by m to leave us with another ODE. Now we're going to do some simplification. We'll let omega 0 squared equal lambda over ml, and we'll let a lowercase f of t equal lambda f of t over ml. This will just leave us with an expression for forced, damped, simple harmonic motion. Well. In this equation, we've got multiple cases because we use the auxiliary equation method again, but that leaves us with different outcomes. There are four main cases here, depending on the values of k and what the function f of t actually is. Starting with the most basic case, where k equals zero and f of t equals zero, we're actually left with normal simple harmonic motion. The next case is unforced, damped simple harmonic motion, where k is positive and f of t equals zero. This solution we see the oscillations will gradually decay as time increases. The third case is forced, undamped single harmonic motion. What we'll see here is a strange oscillation. This is because our solution sums different frequencies of sine and cosine curves, causing this quite erratic oscillation. The final most complicated type of simple harmonic motion is damped forced simple harmonic motion. As when solving this using the complementary function and particular integral method for second order ODEs, we find that our complementary function part decreases for large t. Before this decays completely, we're in a transient solution, but after this is decayed, we get to what's called a steady state solution. So, thank you for watching today. If you enjoyed, please consider liking and subscribing, and see you next time. Thanks.